Good morning, everyone. Appreciate you joining us today. This morning, we reported a $2.6 billion adjusted pre-tax loss on a 79% decline in revenues for the September quarter. We ended the quarter with over $21 billion in liquidity, having brought our cash burn down to $18 million per day in the month of September. And while we still have a long road ahead of us when you look through the large toll that the pandemic has taken, we are showing progressive improvement across the business, performing well on factors within our control and ensuring the company is well positioned as demand starts to return. And there are signs that customers are becoming increasingly confident in, re in returning to air travel, with TSA counts growing each week. But we are still running at a fraction of our normal capacity and expect that our December quarter revenues will be 30 to 35 percent of what we saw a year ago. To put that improvement in context, our revenues bottomed out in the second quarter at only 10 percent of prior year levels. We're at 21 percent of prior year levels in the third quarter, and we expect them to be roughly one-third of prior year levels in the fourth quarter. Steady improvement, as Q4 is expected to generate three times the revenue of Q2, but still a long way to go. To see a meaningful step up in demand from here, we'll need business travel to further improve, local quarantines to end, and international restrictions to lift. That will only come with widespread advances by the medical community and offices reopening, which many expect will start to happen in the first half of next year. As we all know, the path to revenue recovery is dependent on demand returning at scale. Until then, our focus is on doing a great job at what we can control taking great care of our people and our customers, protecting our liquidity, and managing our cost performance. For our customers, we continue to emphasize safety and health with the Delta Care Standard, our multi-layered approach that includes intense cleaning protocols, blocking middle seats, and requiring masks on board our planes. According to IATA, with over 1 billion air travelers worldwide in 2020, there have only been 44 documented cases of suspected COVID transmission on board an aircraft, and virtually all of them were in the early months of the pandemic before masks and revised safety protocols came into existence. We carry at Delta over 1 million people a week and have had no documented transmission on board any of our aircraft. The Delta Care Standard works, and it's keeping our customers and our employees safe. And as a result, customers are increasingly becoming comfortable returning to the year. Our customer-focused approach is producing record net promoter scores, which reached 75 in September, which is up a staggering 22 points over the prior year levels. This is a testament to the Delta people who have continued to shine throughout this historic crisis. By restoring customers' confidence in travel and investing in their long-term loyalty and trust, we're creating a path to sustainable revenue growth in the future. But we do believe it could still be two years or more until we achieve a normalized revenue environment. Until then, we will be smaller in the short term, but also more agile and more efficient. Today, we're already 20% smaller than we were at the start of this year, having reduced our fleet, our headcount, and our overhead. These were difficult but essential decisions that positioned Delta to emerge as a more resilient airline. We have resized our ground and flight attendant workforces by 20%. I'm grateful to all those employees for the sacrifices, from those taking early retirement decisions to the 40,000 staff who took unpaid voluntary leaves throughout the pandemic, and thus reducing our labor costs for our non-pilot groups by more than 40% over the past six months. This was the driving factor that allowed us to avoid furloughs and protect their jobs. We are still working with Alpha, and hopefully we can achieve that same result with our pilots. But if not, we will be furloughing roughly 1,700 pilots on the 1st of November. We've reduced our fleet by retiring more than 200 aircraft this year and accelerated our fleet simplification to retire nearly 30% of our fleet, or 400 aircraft by 2025. Along with our revised Airbus order book, this cuts years off the timeline to achieving a higher gauge fleet with lower seat cost and a better customer experience. 
by making these structural changes to our cost base in this constrained environment, we will have significant cost and margin tailwind ahead of us as higher yielding business travel does return and our load factor caps begin to ease. And we are seeing early signs of our cost efficiency steps paying off as our fourth quarter all-in chasm is projected to be roughly flat despite a 40% reduction in capacity year over year. It's an incredible result and creates nice momentum heading into 21. The challenges of this year have reinforced our belief in the importance of an investment grade balance sheet and our top financial priority will be to regain that as soon as possible. The first step in that process is getting back to break even cash flow. We had initially hoped to be there by the end of this year, but as the virus has had greater impact on our business than expected, that goal has shifted a few months. We expect to average a daily cash burn rate of $10 million per day in the December month with good line of sight to positive cash flow by the spring. Once we achieve that milestone, we'll have a heightened focus on paying down debt. Putting all this good work into perspective, it's been about positioning Delta to accelerate into a post-COVID recovery. Do we know exactly when that recovery will happen or what it will look like? No. But by taking out complexity, simplifying our cost structure, improving our products and service levels now, and maintaining strong employee morale in the face of this challenging time, we do know that we'll be even more customer focused with a stronger brand and a solid financial foundation. And with that, we will be well positioned to adapt and to win. Now, I'll turn the call over to Glenn. Thanks, Ed, and good morning, everyone. Since we last spoke in July, we've seen a steady progression in demand. This has resulted in our net cash sales improving from five to 10 million per day at the beginning of the quarter to approximately 25 to 30 million per day at the end of the quarter. That said, demand strength varied in different regions and segments of our business. Corporate demand has shown signs of modest improvement. And while the volume of corporate travel at the end of the quarter was 15% of last year's levels, corporate volumes are trending upward across all industries, and we expect this to continue into 2021. Apart from the Caribbean and Mexico, international demand remains weak. This is largely due to government-imposed restrictions in key markets. In the U.S., we've seen demand recover to 30, 20, 35 to 40% of pre-pandemic levels with strength in leisure markets like Florida, the Mountain West, and the beach destinations. However, cities that are under quarantine requirements like New York and Boston are recovering more slowly and are now just above 20% of pre-pandemic levels. As we approach the holiday travel period, we've been pleased with the recent booking trends for Thanksgiving and Christmas, which show that customers continue to gain confidence in booking further out. Our non-ticket businesses have held up relatively well during the quarter, with both loyalty revenue and cargo outperforming passenger revenues. The strength in our loyalty revenue stream is in large part due to the spend on the Delta co-brand card. American Express has stated that the spend on our co-brand card has held up better than other Amex cards. We recently launched a card acquisition campaign after putting those efforts on hold and have had excellent response to this offering. This, in combination with spend trends that Amex has seen, suggests that our customers' aspirations to travel remain intact. Our next question comes from Safi Sith of Raymond James. Thanks. Good morning. Um, I think, Ed, you, you've said that, you know, it's, it's not about building back to what was, but building for the future, although you probably put it a lot more eloquently than that. So I was just wondering, you know, have your teams had substantial conversations with corporate customers to kind of get an idea of what the makeup and size of business travel may look like once kind of pandemic fears are behind us, you know, especially now that customers have had a chance to see both what video conferencing technology can and cannot deliver? Hi, Savi. Yes, we are in frequent uh, daily conversation with with all of our our corporate customers, and you know a couple couple interesting stats. Uh, today, we have uh, roughly 90% of our of our uh, primary corporate customers who do have travelers who are traveling. 
small numbers in many of those, but you know, they're getting their own sense for what the new travel experience is. And anecdotally, they're coming back to us with really strong reviews of safety and, and confidence in, in restoring uh, their travel spend. Uh, you know, how video technology is going to impact uh, long-term business travel, I'm of the view that it, it will have some impact, but it's not going to be a substitute. It will be a complement to, to business travel. It won't be a substitute for business travel. Uh, I don't think anybody knows. Uh, you know, there's lots of experts out there that put dates out as to when, uh, when the new normal will be achieved. My sense is that we could be looking at anywhere from 10 to 20 percent reduction in the, uh, in the next couple years you know, when we get to that new normal of, of business travel. But the one thing I'll also tell you, Savvy, having been in this business for a long time, every crisis that I've been part of, you know, and it's been a lot of crises over, over the 20 plus years, uh, this was the first thing that, that people always uh, talked about was that business travel was, this was the death knell of business travel and uh, technology was going to replace the need, need for travel. And every single time, business travel has come back stronger than anyone uh, anticipated. So I, I think we're going to see that same uh, consumer behavior. It, it will undoubtedly be different, but I think it's going to come stronger than most of the pundits fear. Thank you. Our final question comes from Miles Walton of UBS. I know um, probably a little premature question, but thinking about the long game, Ed, with the, the Airbus delivery schedule cleaned up, retirement plans set through 25, is now the right time for opportunistic overtures uh, to Boeing for, you know, thinking about an order um, given the pro forma fleet in that out year is still 40% Boeing, but obviously, uh, you know, your order book there still essentially zero. Uh, hey, Miles, uh, I get asked that question by the press all the time, and I'll give you my, my standard response is that we talk to the OEMs about all aircraft all the time and uh, always looking for opportunities. So I don't have anything to report on that, but uh, you, can, you can rest assured that we're always, we're always looking for opportunities where, where it would advantage Delta. Is there, is there a reason for the 2025 dating of the retirement plan for the 6-7 and, and 1-7s in particular? No, it's just a convenient five-year interval. Obviously, there will be more retirements post-25, post but it's, uh, we figured five years is, uh, is a pretty long look. Uh, given given what we've been through this year. Okay. 